My topic today is on God wants you. Yes. So first thing that I got when I heard God wants you is anointing. Basically being like the main part of the topic is God wants you. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying anointing because obviously God is going to want everybody to be. It's only specific people mm -hmm. that's actually going to follow through with what he's asking for. Right. So yes. there's that. The second point that I got was it's not about anyone else. You have to stress that fact because in being a Christian or just knowing that you have to do something, you might hang around a certain crowd and they might not be doing the same things that you know that you have to do. So, being that it's only about you, I'm saying that it might be hard for you to, it might be hard for you to come from one group and move to the next. It might be hard for you to adjust from your old ways yes. to the new ways. Yes. So, a scripture that I found that can relate to this is Isaiah 58 verse 8 to 12. So I'm going to read that out for you guys. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. Mm -hmm. If thou take away from the midst of the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and the speaking vanity, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought. Yes. And make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, yes. and like a spring of water, whose gardens fill not. So from this scripture, I got that you should basically fit the fit the criteria and the requirements for him. So remove yourself from the group that I was talking about earlier, the group that is doing bad, and get ready to be in the group that God wants you to be in. So, let's speak more on the fitting the criteria for him. Fitting the criteria, criteria is basically just an agenda or like a standard that you have to live up to. So, fitting the criteria for him is just being a non-manipulative non Christian. Basically, doing what you have to do. Like, doing everything that you have to do physically and not putting it in vain. So, showing up when it's time to show up at church. Right. But during the weekday, Monday through Saturday, uh -huh. you're, I don't wanna say at clubs, cause I don't wanna roam through y'all clubs, but mm -hmm. you're doing stuff that's not, that you're not supposed to be doing. So yeah, don't be a manipulative Christian basically. Yes. And speaking more on the, um, removing yourself from the group part. When you try to like, so for example, if I'm going to one school and I already have my clique, and then I have to transfer to another school, everybody knows who I am, everybody knows how I talk. When I go to my next school, I'm not gonna be looking for, say, a white girl who's quiet, who's wearing, you know, clothes that I don't wear. I'm gonna look for somebody who looks like me. Like, so I'm saying all of this to say that when you find, when God removes you from one group and he puts you in another. You have to make sure that you're choosing the right people mm -hmm. to like lay yourself around or to like trust them. Yes. And it's really only God that you could really, really trust in because he's going to be the one to give you what you need to answer all your questions. And he's the one that's giving you the anointing at the end of the day. The reward comes from him. Amen. So these are a few words in my heart. Praise the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord.
What a mighty God we serve. Yes. What an awesome God yes. we serve. Yes. Mighty to save and strong to deliver. Hallelujah. Yes. Our reading is going to come from the book of Jonah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. We're going to read from oh. Jonah chapter 1. Amen, amen, amen. And it says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amattiah, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up and flee unto Tasha from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. To, so he paid the fear thereof and went down into it, it, into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent a great wind unto the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea. So that the ship was like to be broken. Then the, then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God. And cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us, that we may perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, Come, and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. <coughs> what is thy occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am an Hebrew. I fear the Lord the God of heaven, which had made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee? that the sea may be calm unto us. For the sea roared and was tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempestuous is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land. But they could not. For the sea roared and was tempestuous against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for the man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, has done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. <coughs> And the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Here and then the reading contains 17 verses. We bless the Lord. So Sister Lamani did the exhortation and she spoke on God wants us. Hallelujah. And um, my topic to you today is God's pursuit of you. God's pursuit of you. 
So God wants you is the exaltation and the topic speaks about God's pursuit of you. Pursuit means to pursue, to come after, to chase. Yes. Huh? Yes. Hallelujah. It means that even if you're running, he's going to run after you. But in order for you to pursue something or someone, you have to first want it. You must have a need for it. You okay. want it. Okay. So God wants us. Hallelujah. And because he wants us, he is willing and able and capable to pursue us. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we don't often think at times that um, we think, you know, after God calls us that it's that simple. But a lot of time after God has called us, we still running from him. Yes. We are disciples of the Lord, but running from our disciples. You understand? We're running from the person who is supposed to exalt us, the person who's supposed to teach us, the person who's supposed to empower us. We're running. Right? So, when I, I looked at this and I looked at Jonah, <laughs> hallelujah. Okay, I'm looking at Jonah right now. <laughs> and in the book of 1 Jonah, let's, let's consider Jonah because we've considered Jonah from different aspects. Um, and I want to be quick with you. We consider him from different aspects, but not from this aspect. And we'll see God in a, in a, in a new light, and a different light, in that he pursues us. You know, sometimes we often say, or oh, I have said, that God is not a bandit. God would not imprison you, but he would chase after you. Hmm? God didn't say to the... the change it. God didn't say to the... Um, to the marinas or to the captain of the ship and the men on the ship to throw Jonah overboard. Jonah came to that decision. So that's why I say God will not, um, he's not a bandit. He wouldn't hold you hostage, but he will put you in a position where you will have to recalculate and you will have to do some deep introspective look and decide that if I want to see something different that I'm going to have to reroute. So it started off with Jonah being given a simple command, which is to go after a rebellious people and tell them how they have rebelled against God, and God is going to bring his judgment unto them. Hallelujah. But in the midst of that, what happens is that Jonah decides that he don't want to do that. How many of us don't want to do what God will ask us to do? And sometimes it, it's not because the job is hard, but sometimes it's because of circumstances in life. Because we have too much going on. Mm? Sometimes it is because we're too stressed out. Sometimes the bills is overwhelming and you're telling me to come and the Lord want me to do something for church. Oh, hey man! The church is here hungry and I know money and the bill and the this and the that and the that and that and that and that. So Jonah said, let's look at it this way. Right? So Jonah said, I ain't got time for this. Because what happened is that he did not see the profit of him going to Nineveh. And so too with us, when we don't see the profit of what God is instructing us to do, we fail to do it. Likewise, when you don't see the profit of what your parent is telling you, you don't do it, right? If you don't see it to be profitable, you don't do it. But guess what happens? There is some instructions that comes with visible profits, and there is some instruction where you're going to have to wait for the fruit to mature before you can see the profit. So some things you will be told to do, and you can, you can get an explanation right now that some, if you do this, you're going to get $20. Mm -hmm. So you know the profit, so you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then there are some things that the Lord will say to you, or the parent will say to you, I need you to just go by teacher Rhonda, and when you get there, she will do the rest. But if you don't see the profit of the instruction, and you say, well, that is a waste of my time, because that's what Jonah taught, that going to Nineveh was a waste of his time, because Nineveh was rebellious. God said unto him that they are wicked. So he taught that when he go and he would have spoken to them, that they still would not have changed. So he 
decided on his own that I'm not going to go where God wants me to go. And this is where we got to be careful in our lives. Because when we don't go where God wants us to go, the sea is going to rot against us. Life is going to rot against us. Because when Jonah decided to head in the opposite direction, and Jonah is presumptuous with this thing, you know, because why everybody else is worried? Jonah is sleeping comfortable. How many of us sleeping comfortable in disobeying what God has asked us to do? Or maybe you're, you maybe you're following God, but it's the pastor you're rebelling against. What is rebellion? If you are instructed to do something and you don't do it, it is rebellion. You have to back and say no. You have to tell me no, you're not doing it. You know. All you need to do is not do it. That's rebellion. Hmm? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alright, let me let me touch a little right now. Let me see by show of hands. Since you have not been getting um we, we stopped doing the, the, the zoom for the fasting. How many of you have been fasting on a Thursday? One, two, three, four, five. But this church we fast on a Thursday. Huh? So those of you that going against that rebellious. <laughs> so you're going in the opposite direction and you wonder why <laughs> this is the bottom it's, it's well skating it why? you're wondering why but guess what happened so one set is going you, you not you you're in fasting one set going so <laughs> one set going so and the next one going so but we are one body don't come at me go your way turn and go your direction <laughs> <laughs> and you wonder why there is havoc in your life and why we begin to war right here and we can't get no breakthrough. Amen. Simple as that. I, I am bringing this to your consciousness because we have to use the things that we are going through to, to understand and see how we too have the Jonah spirit. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we said that this church must be a potluck church and not a soup kitchen. Mm -hmm. So the people who have been fasting on your behalf, when are you going to fast on their behalf? Because what you're doing is making a withdrawal where you have not deposited anything because it's too much for you to do. Somebody, when nobody here remind me, I didn't see it in the chat. People have to remind you to do your everyday stuff. No. Your nails, your hair, what you're here, well done. But you have to, you have to remind all you know. So, what happens to us, and you don't understand that um, each time that we, 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 we in, 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 within relationship, there is verbal, there is written contracts, and there is verbal contract. So we have a verbal contract. Huh? So Jonah had a, a contract here with God because he's a servant of the Lord. And as a servant of the Lord, he must now do what the Lord has requested of him. If you don't do what your job requires of you, they don't fire you. Mm -hmm. You cannot do what you want and they keep you on the job. Hey. Impossible. They fire you. Sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. So, Jonah decided that I'm not going to do that. And as I said before, the, the, the sea is raging. Then the people on the ship held a skelter. Mm -hmm. They start to throw things. Let me say, instead of the throwing words, they start to pray. We start to pray. Oh God, I pray. And we pray. And we pray. And we pray. And you hear it? <laughs> and you're praying. The more you throw out, the more the ship going. More life going out. That's the time. You don't know why. You don't know how. Because guess what? The storm that was happening in the sea was affecting those who had nothing to do with it. And the man who was rebellious was not experiencing the storm. What you do and the choices that you make affects the 
think it's still time when I talk about work, I talk about school, relationship, all kind of shit. Wow. So why he sleep comfortable? They was going to the destination that they had already routed and planned to go. Now wake him up. What Tim, what this mean? What is the meaning of this? But he knew already because he knew that the God that he served because of the love that he had for his people that he will pursue you even in the gates of hell. That's what it is. So God will pursue you. Do not decide to jump in a boat and go in the next direction. What does God do? He runs after Jonah. So he run after you. And he throwing things on you. And you're still chilling. But then there. So well, let me cast some lots and see what it is going on here. God will not leave you and I to do what we want to do when he has a divine assignment on your life oh God the thing that you love the most he will take it God wants you that's the thing he wants you down here so he will do whatever it takes to get you. But he wants you to come of your free will. He wants you to say like Jonah and surrender. Show me over God. For whatever has lost, my God choose it as well with my soul. Jonah didn't show no big fish. Was being prepared. But at that point, he was willing to stand in obedience. And the Pope he held accountable for his act. So he said, I'm going to make all these people perish for my sake. Oh, Jesus. Pressure, you know. Huh? Last two weeks I talked about fasting, or last week for your brother eh? and his sister. And I still only get five hand to raise, if so much. Huh? That. We gonna let everybody perish for a plate of food. Only a couple of hours, six to six, and pray and fasting, six to six. He will let everybody perish, huh? Then you come to church, you will pray. And they stand by the pole, you can't pray because your mother, your father, your aji, your baji, and then you shout, you shout, and God say, mm -hmm. one instruction, the same there. Yeah? One instruction the angel and the church give you, yeah? but can you imagine? Yeah. Imagine you will wipe out a whole nation. You won't kill your body. That's what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. But you talk about greed, you know. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it is, greediness. Mm -hmm. Because when we walk in and we are occupied with we work, you don't eat. Mm -hmm. So it's greed mm -hmm. and lack of discipline. But in his house, there must be what? Discipline. Yeah. So he decided to discipline Jonah and shake him up to consciousness. Huh? So God will pursue you. So some things going on in your life and you wonder why it's happening and why this happening. I have learned to say, and I keep saying this to the church, stop saying why and ask God, what it is I'm not doing, Lord? What it is you want to say to me, Lord? Because before that, Jonah and God had a good relationship, yes, you know. Yes. The Bible records their relationship. They had a good relationship. So thing was nice. So too with us. Thing does be nice. And when thing nice, we forget and we start to stray from where God tell us to walk. Because thing nice. And God say, all right. Through the valley. And he said, he's going with you. Mm -hmm. Through the flood, he coming, not so. Mm -hmm. He said, he keys to heaven, have it, so he coming. God, he coming. Hell, he coming, he have it. God behind you, so. You running, come.
I'm Daniel. You do talk, you want bounce up it. Walk. Right? Take no fall, eh? So this, 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 this is you come, Jerry. Go in front of him. So Jerry is the thing that you want. So you run after it. And watch God behind you. <laughs> what? Just to show you. I'm going to use that too. Thy God there. He yeah. throws some oil there. <laughs> Why? Because he, he wants to slow you down. Oh, yes. He's trying to. Obstacles on your way, yes. Watch <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. You're still going after your thing, go now. And you're going to go in. Oh, God. <laughs> to release you yes. from me. Yes. You want God to release you from God. Yes. Alright. Wow. I'm getting it. <laughs> getting it. Thank you. Whatever divine assignment that God has for you in your life. And when we say this thing, I want to stress that we only think church. But in every area of your life, whatever this divine assignment that God has for you, if you go against it, you know what you will be doing? In vain I strive. struggle in vain and life becomes burdensome and it becomes tiresome until we surrender unto the pursuit of Almighty God. Huh? That boy like you and you like him, eh? He buying flowers. He telling everybody. When you when you pass in, pass over and you think in the hall we're watching. Uh, oh no. Nah. All your pics. He love any pics on them. That's so? yeah. up. Uh, and you only and it's so for him because he he wants you. He is willing to himself to get your attention. Mm. Okay, everybody laughing and saying he looking real dotish. That girl don't even like he. <laughs> he don't care! <laughs> if you want him, Jesus wants you and I. The assignment didn't start with whether we want it. You want. When you get chores in, in your house, it is because what you want? No. You choose the chores and these are the chores and you say, okay, this is the time, this is our thing. And your mom and you say, well, this is what I want, I don't have time to do this. I can't do that, I can't do that because my day is full. What happens when you don't do your chores? Your chores pile up. Huh? Your taskmaster begins to get angry. That's how God is going to say, God was wrong with them, you know. Your taskmaster starts to get angry, God gets wrathful with Jonah. He was vexed to the point that he did not even, because could you imagine that Jonah didn't surrender? Does that mean, does that mean, does that mean, I know I said, imagine he didn't surrender. He surrendered because he told them to throw him into the sea. But imagine he didn't do that. You know what that meant? Because God wasn't giving up, you know, he had to mash up his ship with everybody. Because it says that the men, when they heard what it is Jonah said, they had compassion. So they start to roll fast. Some people go into some situation and they want to run and have them roll all time. Yes. And it's a disobedience yes. that happened. Yes. And it says that the harder they roll, the more the waves start to rock the boat. And what it is again is it is being struggling to get free. But Jesus Huh? 
So I want to leave that in your mind and in your thought and let it marinate. First, that God wants you. There is not no bling thing in the house, you know? Mm. Bling to just say, oh gosh, you see Daniel? Yeah. You know, women that have yeah. husband but they ain't have none? Mm. <laughs> yes. You know, see, they have a husband, you know? My husband, my husband. Yeah. But they ain't have no husband? Yeah. Not that they don't physically have one, they have a physical husband, but he not. Yeah. If the one and he one not adding up to be two. Mm. Oh, some people boast about the trend and say the trend so nice and the trend so great. And you come and say, I'm the bad like yes. Yeah. <laughs> so true. Hmm? The desire of Almighty God, the fact that He wants us in His kingdom and He wants us. The, the, the thing about this is that our divine assignment only really fulfills our destiny, you know. Because God made us for one purpose, and that is to worship Him. Anything else we get is favor. So the destiny that you want, the great job, the good husband, the fancy car, the big house, that is just favor. That is not, do you understand? God's desire is that we would worship Him in spirit and in truth. He says by psalms and by singing and by prayer and by exalting one another. So the divine assignment is clear. So if we do those things, like I said to Sister Nisha before, and we, we leave the things of God unto him, huh? and we place our, our minds on the business of God, everything else will fall in line. Doesn't mean to say it's not going to be hard, it's going to be hard. It doesn't mean to say you're not going to be tested, you're going to be tested. It doesn't mean to say you're not going to be tried, you're going to be tried. You got to understand what the nature of life, of, of this life, the cycle of life, what it is. You have to understand that. And when you begin to understand, you will look at life and its challenges differently and not cause it to make you run away from God. Hmm? Whoever we say that we are, Whatever we choose in our life, there's going to come a time when we have to prove ourselves. You're going to have to take the test. Because all the talk that you're talking, that is only theory. You have to do the practical to pass the class. Job talked about his relationship and his love with God. And here's the reason God said to the devil, have you considered my servant Job? Because he know how Job was bossing. You're bossing, bossing by the good Christian news. Hmm? But you can't fast one week. Ah, test. Test. Without test, Daniel, there is no testimony. Okay. Can't testify about what struggle it is and how hard it was and how I had to pray like I never prayed before. I remember my belly start to rumble so I get a headache, I feel I was faint. We must intentionally allow God in his pursuit of us to conquer us. Hmm? We must intentionally allow God in his pursuit of us to conquer us. Because he's not going to take it by force. We have to allow him. That's why he says, as many as come on to me. So we got to answer to the call. Huh? He running. You have to stop and decide and turn around and face him and say, yeah, Lord, here am I. What wouldest thou have me to do? Have mercy and compassion. Because the Bible records that after Jonah had the conversation, he talked to God. He said, Lord, have mercy. Huh? He said, spare these people. Don't damage them for my sake, Lord. So I have to converse with God and say, here am I. All right, Lord. 
to bless the name of the Lord. Daniel just get fancy clothes, not so? Daniel should be real fasting. Huh? Yes. They did when they put on the clothes, they tell you, to whom match is given, match is required. Not so? <laughs> what do you think? And they come and pam pam, pam pam with the clothes. Is it with the clothes? Never. Except the Lord build your house, your labor in vain. If you cannot go through these tests, you know fasting might seem like a thing, but that is a whole test for the fair world the life, you know. Sure. Huh? Because there's going to be some years of farming in your life. No matter who you are. True. Hmm? Farming will come. And when farming comes, what happens? Yeah. You're going to yeah. ball and cry. Yeah. You're going to knock everybody door to get some yeah. rice yeah. because yeah. you don't have food. Yeah. When trouble meets you, what will happen? Fasting is not just not eating, but it is praying and meditating yeah. intentionally yeah. with God. Yeah. It's an intentional thing. It's going on a date. Yeah. Imagine every Thursday you're setting up God. That's what it is. Every Thursday, if God was like, man, be up in heaven talking about, I have a tabanka, I have a tabanka, I have a tabanka. <laughs> then God say, no tabanka, the tabanka is when people set you up and then they just leave you hanging. So that's what it is, you know? Yeah. So what happened? God decide that he had even it's so you know Daniel because he wants you so you go put some pressure on you. He go apply the pressure and if you ain't feel where he's squeezing you, he go squeeze you on the next side and he go squeeze and squeeze and squeeze until you stop in your trap. That's why I talk about going like on thinking horse to battle because why? You know the will. That's why you talk him up. So you're on thinking. And you're going to back. I mean, warfare every day. You're waiting for trouble to fast for you when you are trouble. Ah. Don't walk so. So you have to go to yourself with the word of God. Hmm? Go to yourself with intimate relationship with God. Yes, you just tell him, Lord, I'm mercy, and Lord, I love you, and Lord, you're so sweet, and Lord, you know this, and Lord, you know that. But he's longing for more intimacy with you. He's saying, what he's saying is that it is time that we come out of this dating stage. I want to get into relationship. But when you accept him, you have entered relationship, huh? And when you enter relationship, you run and you go and you get married. And now that you have married him, he expects that as his bride, that you will do bridal duties. Because he says that he is the bridegroom and the church is the bride. How would you be in your marriage? Where you going to do it in your marriage? You're working 12 hour shift. When you come home, you're still. If one eye close and one eye open, you will perform your wifely duties because you want what? Your marriage to work and you want the man to know how you love them. But what happened to God? <laughs> hmm? How are we running from that? God is in pursuit. He married you and he's still pursuing you. You know how lucky he is? Most women tell the tale that after they get married, the husband get bored. The things that they used to do when they was dating, they ain't doing it no more. But the God that we serve, he in pursuit of you before he marry you, and when he marry you, he's still pursuing you. Talk about getting to have your cake and eat it too. So I pray God, I pray Almighty God, that we would look at things in a different light. Look at the your life and life application and see how you are going in the opposite direction. If you want to be a doctor and you're not doing nothing, you're not listening in school, you're not doing your assignments, you're not trying to, to, to get up the ladder, you're not looking for someone who is a doctor to mentor you, how is it going to happen? Which means you are going in the opposite direction. If you only like me with the weed smokers and then the likelihood is you're just going to be another weed smoker or, 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 or um, a weed seller. Because that 
the direction you're heading in. How could you go in the wrong direction and think that you would benefit from on this side? So how could you go opposite while God is pursuing you and then still think that you would benefit of the blessings of God? It will only be for a while. I have to say that right there. Because some people do get through, not so? But it's only for a while. Because after a while, you will see what? They soon wither. And you watch them and say, what happened to them? How they look so? But what's going on with them? And you want to know. The hand of the Lord is upon me. It's not just talking about you to bless and go and anoint. The hand of the Lord is upon you too to do his will. To stay in contact with him. I keep saying to the church that you cannot just want blessing after blessing after blessing. You're thanking him for your blessing, but you're not paying a vow. Oh God, you're wicked. <laughs> he giving and he giving and he giving. Care about love relationship, friend relationship, family relationship, but God relationship. You think we show up on a Sunday and get in the head, get in the... And all I do is prep in your mind, you know. Because we are about to end this old year and step into a new year. And we must be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because them thing them that you think will come to pass in 2023, with that same old mindset, it would not. Yeah, no change thing, you know. Yeah, don't make, but they say, double, double, and they say, double, double, and so we still catching me, we can't even get one, we can't even get half, much less for double, and they say, double, double, and see, see what kind of life they're life in, in havoc, numbers and year and change in your situation, you must change your mind, and when you change in mind, it must manifest. Hmm? You want a better church? Be a better member. Huh? You want a better job? Be a better employee. Huh? You want a better teacher? Be a better student. Because one invokes the other. We have to understand these things. And when we come into consciousness of these things, we must recognize it and be like, okay. What must I do next? Assess for yourself. Don't let nobody have to tell you. So your own self be true. That's what we have to do. I love self-assessment. Self-assessment must not be badgering. Hmm? Self-assessment must not be a mashing up yourself and you're, you know, you're breaking down your... It must be with a mature and calm spirit so that you can have an unbiased assessment that is not tainted. Which means that you're going to be fear. That when you assess yourself, if you see that you is a liar, you must say self, you is a liar, don't do that again. Self, you is a thief, don't do that again. Self, you can do better, don't do that again. Because a lot of us beat up self when we do self-assessment, but there is no improvement. With self-assessment must come self-improvement. <coughs> let God bless you and let God keep you. I pray that the words will rest upon your heart. I pray that these words will trouble your spirit. That it must trouble your spirit and it's still watch at the night. It must tug at your string and wake you up. It must cause you to drop on your knees and bow and wail and say, Lord, I surrender unto you. Oh God, forgive me, Lord, I'm coming home. Mm -hmm. I will do better, Lord. But oh God, be my helper. Anything God has required of us, we can do it. Yes, we can. He promised to be with help. He promised 
because I, I kid you not, I kid you not, before the day is ended today, you will ask God another favor. Before the day ended, like Jesus said unto Peter, before the cock could throw, crow thrice, Peter, three times. Oh, God, you ask him a favor before, before the stars set and the moon come up tonight, you will ask God a favor. I pray, God, that when you ask in your favor, that you remember also that what you desire and what you ought to have with Jesus Christ your God of heaven, what you ought to have with the Holy Spirit is a potluck relationship. Time to stop scamming. You've been scamming. You've been scamming. You're swiping card and getting credit and it's not your card. You've been swiping your brother's card because you know the pin. Because he's one body. You know the pin code. So you see D card and you, you pick it up because you know D does work hard and he does make people lay money here, you know. You know that he has something in his stores. So you chuck it in and you say, well, you know, I need something. D ain't go mine, man. Click, click, click and you take some. And then you say, I'm gonna D, you know, and you find your card. But you know, I have no food in the house and I know you wouldn't mind. That's what we do with God. You're scamming. You have an account. For heaven's sake, make some deposits in your account for when your rainy day come. You got rainy day coming. Rainy day is coming. Whether you like it or you don't like it, rainy day is coming. As much as we may think we have long to stay here, we don't have that long. A thousand ages in our sight is but an evening gone. Make haste while there is still time. Let us make full use of our time and understand that as God pursues us, he will not hold you hostage. Even though he is pursuing you, he will not force you. Even though he is pursuing you, he will not take you by force. He wants you. He's in pursuit of you, but he still needs you to surrender to his pursuit. God bless you and God keep you.